on a world supported on the back of a giant turtle, sex unknown, a gleeful, explosive, wickedly eccentric expedition sets out. There's an avaricious but inept wizard, a naive tourist whose luggage moves on hundreds of dear little legs, dragons who only exist if you believe in them, and of course, the edge of the planet. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, then you know that I cover a lot of licensed games, and you know that most of them are wretched. Every now and then I'll come across something really good, like Beavis and Butthead, or I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, but most of them are junk. Let's be honest here, if the intent of developing a licensed game is just to make some extra cash and ride the success of the source material, the game isn't going to have a lot of heart. And then there's Discworld. Oh, Discworld, you are something special. This video game is based off of the works of comedic fantasy author Terry Pratchett, whose stories focus on Discworld, a land that's held up by four elephants that are riding on the back of a giant turtle named Atuin, sex unknown, that is continually floating through space. These stories are very detailed and have a very specific kind of clever humor with many notable characters, and Pratchett is the king of punny dialogue. So how does this work translate into a video game? Or does it? Can this game capture the magic of Discworld? Oh, chucky, chucky, chucky. Oh. Stop it! Stop acting insane! Well, it captured something, that's for sure. I'm not sure if it captured fun per se, but here, let me explain. This game takes a lot of ideas from Pratchett's novel Guards Guards, as indicated by this introduction. As you can see here, the ghost of Christmas yet to come has been cloned and has taken up Draco Mancy. Hey, who's the idiot that's chanting out of sync? Get your act together, man! So basically, a dragon is conjured and brought to Ankh Morpork, a city state in Discworld, by a secret cult who can't chant in sync. Meanwhile, over at Hogwarts, I mean, Unseen University, Rincewind the Wizard and his pet luggage sleep soundly, though he is awakened to go see the Arch-Chancellor, who by now has been alerted to the dragon crisis. Dragons exist if you believe in them. Really? Because if that's the way it works, I believe in dinosaurs. <laughs> that's not funny. Your objective? Well, you gotta get this bloody dragon out of here. How, you ask? Well, the answer is quite obvious. Poisonous darts. No, it's not? Oh, right, right. Ahem. <clears throat> the answer is solving extremely obscure inventory puzzles involving sometimes finding seemingly inconsequential items that you have to click on everything until it does something, so you can use it on something else that makes no sense. Then you gotta time travel and throw up frogs so you can... I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but trust me, this game is hard and it does have some of the most absurd inventory puzzles I've ever seen. You know what else this game has? A character named Windlepoons, and he likes pickles, and that's just great. This city is getting into, into a fine old pickle. Oh, please don't get started on the pickles again. Pickles? We don't eat pickles if you're wearing a dress. You'll stay in the hem. The game is broken up into four parts. The first part involves finding a bunch of items that can help Rincewind combat the dragon. Your pet luggage comes along with you, isn't he cute? Anything with a billion legs is completely adorable, with the exception of everything else with a billion legs. The luggage serves as your inventory because unlike other adventure games, this one recognizes that putting a ladder in your pants is ridiculous, so Rincewind can hold a couple of small things while luggage can hold virtually everything else. It's like Mary Poppins' carpet bag. The characters in this game really embody what the Discworld books are all about. The humor, the story, and the dialogue stay faithful to Pratchett's amazing imaginary world. Ahem, yes, uh, what might your name be? It's secret. Eh? I can't tell you, but Mr. Flower knows. Oh, well, if you like. Um, hello, Mr. Flower. The game also looks gorgeous with detailed backdrops and character designs, but the mechanics are lacking in fun. I hate saying that because everything about this game screams Discworld, but the complexity of these puzzles is outright cruel sometimes. For example, at one point I found myself dumping a can of custard into a toilet, then putting an octopus in the toilet with the custard. Then I had to give someone some prunes in which I had to go back in time to get a drumstick so I could ring the lunch bell so I could distract this guy from guarding the gate so I could steal them and hide them in the guy's caviar so that this could happen. Disturbing. Is he dead in there? 
thought of these puzzles. I don't even know. A crazy person. It's insane. Stop it. Stop acting insane. The dialogue between characters is really well written, and I think a lot of people who like this style of humor will enjoy it. The problem is that the conversations I do find hilarious seem to drag on forever, and it takes away from the focus of the game. At least it does for me. If you approach this game as if it were a book, it's highly enjoyable and charming. But there's also a game going on here, and I can't focus on the puzzles when the dialogue goes completely off the rails. Rincewind eventually finds the dragon, and the dragon, being a highly manipulative creature, tricks Rincewind into helping him, or her. I wish only to return to my home dimension, seek out this evil brotherhood and destroy the spells that control me, or else they shall force me to kill again. From then on, Rincewind will need to go into L space, short for library space, which sends him back in time before the cult summoned the dragon. So the idea is to do things in L space to change the outcome of the summoning. In the Discworld series, L space is the ultimate statement of knowledge is power. Thus, it seems like a good place to visit if you can convince your librarian monkey to allow you access. Hint, monkeys will do anything for a banana. Welp, to the L space. <laughs> Despite the gameplay being overly complicated at times, the things you do in L space are fucking brilliant. As an example, remember that frog we spewed earlier in the game? Well, that didn't happen for no reason, that was a hint. When you travel back through L space, you'll find your previous hungover self sleeping it off on a bench. So what do we do? No, we do not draw a dick on his forehead. We put the frog in Rincewind's mouth. How do we know to do that? Well, because the frog was in his throat in the future, meaning we put it there in the past. If you really think about this frog's timeline, it's not good. He exists to be spewed out of someone's mouth in the future, then put back in someone's mouth in the past for all eternity. This frog exists in this never-ending time loop. Poor frog. I shall name him Einie. Here's another one. You have to capture this butterfly and put it in a lamp near a monk to change what happens to him in the future. This is what happens when we do that. Know what that's called? The butterfly effect, of course. This game is smart. Maybe a little too smart. We learn through the gameplay that the members of the dragon summoning cult are actually innocent looking town folks who just want power. Hail, brothers! Hail! 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 Yay, right! Hail! Little once again, we elucidated brethren of the sword are met. Little once again, we shall weave the webs of power. Oh god, one of them is the fool? The fool wants power? Do we really want that? Yes. Once I thought it was my destiny to build a papier-mâché dinosaur in my bedroom. Well, he'd still be better than most politicians. This is an insanely long, drawn-out game, especially if you get stuck or go through every line of recorded dialogue. This game is so long that one of the characters dies of old age when you're playing it. Look, is he alright? Uh, malaria. Malaria? Among the things that make this world an enjoyable experience is the voice acting of Eric Idle, who plays Rincewind. In fact, I would say that the majority of voice acting in this game is spot on, and most of the characters are represented really well. I especially love Big Sally from the brothel. In fact, if you bring her what she wants, she'll give you something special. I don't know about this. What is that? It's a bowl of custard. Didn't you like it? A bowl of custard? That's your special, making custard? Why not? I can't imagine what assumptions you've been making. Hey, come on now, get your mind out of the gutter. This is Discworld, not Grand Theft Auto. And before you ask, yes, Death does make an appearance in this game. Death is one of the most beloved characters for many Discworld fans, so it'd be a shame not to have him in there, but unfortunately, his appearance is quite brief. Death does have a more prominent role in the second Discworld game, Mortality Bites. A bit slippery, is it? It's fine, I assure you. Maybe you'd better just spit on your hands. I'm actually quite impressed by what this game was able to accomplish, and if it didn't have such batshit crazy inventory puzzles in it, I would give this game 10 out of 10 Swamp Dragons, but I have to knock it down a few points due to the overbearing nature of the puzzles. Despite my frustrations with the mechanics, Discworld makes for a perfect adventure game. It really does. I still had fun with it, and I think fans of Terry Pratchett will appreciate the more genuine nature of the game. This is one of those instances where a licensed game makes complete sense to me, and I think it's one of those point-and-click games that deserves more recognition no matter what the difficulty level is. If you really want to escape from reality for a little bit, and I mean really, really escape reality, with a game that has every intention of amusing you, then Discworld is your game. Just make sure you have a lot of time on your hands, because you are going to need it. So be off with you, you, you dastardly overcleaner. No, no, look, I don't want your wretched stick. So, 
So it's the pickles you're after then, is it? <laughs> you devilish young trouser. Well, I'm on to you, you know. I'm on to you, you young bookcase. Now look, this is not the problem that I wanted to address. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video on the point and click adventure game Discworld. I hope you liked it and I hope you give the game a shot, especially if you love comedic fantasy novels as much as I do. Click on whatever annotations I decided to put on this end slate to be whisked away to other dimensions of YouTube. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.